Right, welcome to the vineyard. Uh, my name is Dave. I'm the pastor here. My wife, Laura, is leading worship today with uh, Phil and Craig. I'm just going to run through some notices uh, as we go through uh, just to help the people that go out for kids to see what's going on. So a warm welcome. If you're new to the vineyard, please come as you are. We love newcomers. We want you to feel completely welcome and completely at home. So let us know what your experience was like with a feedback card. Give us that. And there are some free travel mugs and kids' bottles if you want to take one of those because we're trying to uh, re reduce our carbon footprint uh, and make sure that we uh, save the planet. And there are some newcomers' packs as well. Please take one of those with you as well. Uh, click. Kids' Quest. So last week's Kids' Quest, what is the optimum time chewing a bubble gum to get it to blow the best bubbles? And the answer was 15 minutes. Someone has actually worked that out in a university somewhere across the world to work out what is the best way to chew a chewing gum to get the best bubble this week's one click is all about formula one how many grand prix does an f formula one car last on average in general before it's replaced so how many times does it on average just a formula car formula one car uh, how many races did it go through before it is uh, needs to be replaced by a better newer car that's this week's quest uh click oh Peter the penguin has gone back south for the winter. So we now have Axel the Alsatian. Where is Axel the Alsatian? Can you find it and win some sweets? Uh, and Adrian, this is for kids, not for adults, okay? <laughs> Stop cheating. <laughs> I can see him. Any of the kids? Can you see where Axel the Alsatian is? <gasps> Maya. Well done, he's behind the telly, isn't he? Yes. He's taken Peter's place. Now, I've got some sweets in here. You have to ask uh, Nanny and Granddad, how many are you allowed to have? How many bags of sweets are you allowed to have? Can we go as far as th two? I can, oh, I can say three, but two. Okay. <laughs> then you can have one each. There you go, my dear. That's for you. You can do it next week. Right. No, no, Dave. So all the adults cheating today then, are they? Great. Lovely to see this. Not just you, Adrian. Not just you. Brilliant. Click. So if you want to become a member here, we don't have a particularly uh, scheme or anything like that. Membership is a verb. You do things to become a member. So come on Sundays. You've got one of your five already. Join a small group. I'll give you some details in a sec for some new small groups. Serve on Sundays. It's Rota Monday tomorrow. So get your text back in quickly. Give regularly. Let's pass this round, shall we? Let's start with Dave, as he looks a little bit undernourished. <laughs> Do take a sweet. If you're a visitor, don't put any money in the collection basket, please. Uh, and then invite friends to one of these things coming up. Click. Uh, so we talked about a little while back about money. This is what it costs to run church on a Sunday. So now that most of you may have been paid for January, maybe it's this week you're getting paid, we thought we would do a little bit more kind of a, a allowable um, talk about uh, getting some more money into the church. And uh, bearing in mind that it's an economic crisis, if you don't have any money, please do not say anything, do anything at all about this. However, if you are in a position to uh, give some more money, to review your money that you give to church, maybe to start giving money to church, this is a really good time to do it uh, because the church is as poor as the nation at the moment. This is what it costs us on a Sunday to actually run church. It gives you a little idea that, you know, it's not just like a, you throw a tenner at it, walk in the door, a couple of cakes down that kind of thing it does cost us uh actually it's, it's probably over 400 pounds this is the conservative estimate of what we charge what we what it costs us to run church on a sunday so 380 pounds north of that to actually run church just to give you an idea that obviously ministry costs money it's not a pleasant thing to say but we do like to say it regularly just to say if you're in if you're interested in giving money to church this will be a good time to do that click we're watching the weather. Um, it looks like it's going to get warmer this week, but if there is a cold spell and it looks like the site here is, is going to be difficult. I don't know if you drove down that hill, just coming out of the car park thinking there's a nice brick wall at the end of it, thinking if you actually slip down there, you're not going to stop and you're going to go straight into the brick wall. Things like that on a Sunday will be difficult for us to actually manage. So we may need to change things at the last minute. There will be a message at nine o'clock on a Sunday morning as to whether church is on or off. So please uh, bear that in mind. Click. 
Prayer diaries on the table. Uh, today is the 22nd, and we're praying for the UK today. Vineyard UK, as they support and serve us in our quest to spread the kingdom in Essex. So if you could pray for Vineyard across the UK, you know, we always need prayer. The Vineyard across the UK needs prayer, and it will be really helpful if you could do that today in your prayer diaries for January. Click. Big Bible Group has started, but we're repeating it this week in Rayleigh at our house at 8 o'clock. So if you want to start a new group, now is the time to do that. It's a really good course. We did the first one in Southend uh, last Thursday. It's really interesting. If you want to know more about the Bible and how to read the Bible, it's a really good course to do that for. And also tomorrow we've got Vineyard Essentials for Leaders. Uh, that's the first one of this year. It's a monthly course to talk about Vineyard leadership issues as we go through and try to train people uh, to become uh, le Vineyard leaders. Click. Still going. Ladies groups. There are some great uh, events coming up. 4th of Feb, we have a breakfast at the Roebuck at 9 o'clock. Also on 4th of Feb in the evening at Dyes, we've got a chill and chat evening. I think it's called something different. Apologies about that. And I've got, I'm not sure when the ladies' uh, Bible study is starting. I don't think it's then. February. Okay, first of Wednesday. Uh, that's, that, is the, that is the first. Okay, well, we'll confirm that next week. Brilliant. Thank you. So lots of things going on for ladies. Click. Uh, DTI road trips coming up for youth on Saturday the 11th, that's in London. If you want to book, you'll need to book because we need to buy tickets for that. We can't just turn up. Uh, youth is at Sue's this Friday, so please let us know if your youth want to go to the uh, road trip on the 11th. We do have some tickets we can allocate. It will be free for parents. It's not something we expect you to pay for. And to be honest, I think the adults are more uh, enthusiastic than the kids at the moment because it's one of those things that adults get as much out of as kids do. So if you want to, if you want to chaperone a child, then come along. Ten already, excellent, cool. So that is a, so that's a Saturday evening in, um, in London, and it finishes with a silent disco. Anyone been to a silent disco before? What can you tell me about a silent disco? What is wrong about that title? It's not silent, is it? Not, it's just, there's, there's no silence at all in a silent disco, is there? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Click. Right, um, every time I key Rota into a text, it comes out as Rita. I've never, key, I never actually text the word Rita before, so this is Rita Skeeter um, advertising. It's Rota Monday tomorrow. Expect the text if you're on the Rota. Please reply as soon as possible with your February availability. And next Sunday, we are not here. Next Sunday, we're not here in the morning, we're not here in the evening, but we are uh, borrowing Grange Free Church London Road, which is where Soft Play and Lego Club meet. It's opposite where we used to meet in Swain, quite near St Michael's down at uh, the bottom of the hill. Uh, if you need details, I'll send it out this week, send you a, a, a sat-nav postcode. You can park in this road here, which I think is Langdon something. You can park in there uh, on a Sunday. Um, yeah, it is, yeah. If, where we turned right to go to Swain, turn left, and it's just where the shops are, yeah. Yeah, you can, you can see it from the main road. We're doing a uh, special service there. For, it's called Grow Baby Church, which is basically to commission everyone involved in Grow Baby to encourage you and say, what a fantastic year we had last year. Let's repeat that with the Holy Spirit this year. So church, it will be child-friendly. It will be youth-friendly. Come along to, to, to next Sunday, 4.30 at the Grange. Click. Uh, surveys are out. I've had four back so far fall back if you're doing it please do it as soon as possible and get those results back to us we want to know what you feel about church what we can change what's working what isn't it gives us a really good idea of where to go for the new year click and on the back of that there is a can we just have your records your details uh, to let us know exactly where to send things where to whatsapp can we whatsapp can we text what your favorites what's your favorite way of being communicated with all that kind of stuff i think that might be it click Yes, that's it. Yeah, cool. Why don't you stand up and we're going to pray. <clears throat> we're going to have uh, four or five songs now to worship. In the middle of the worship set, kids are going to go out to their group upstairs. So primary school, we're going out to um, Planet Kids. After um, worship, it's the youth. Um, but let's just uh, come before God, shall we? Lord Jesus, we want to come home to you today, Lord. We want to feel that warmth in our heart that we can walk in 
walk into your presence, worship you, and know we are completely safe, Lord, completely at one with you, completely relaxed, and completely free to worship you totally. To worship you with everything we've got, Lord, heart, mind, soul, strength, this morning, Lord. What a wonderful opportunity this is, Lord, to come together. We could do this in our own homes, Lord, but we're doing it here together as Christians who like each other, Christians who love each other, Christians who love you. We can meet together, Lord Jesus, and know who you are. One of the things uh, that Dave and Jamie and myself uh, as the worship leaders really, really uh, appreciate is that when we can hear people singing, it makes such a difference. And uh, during the week, this is a really messy, sticky floored dining space, but on a Sunday, we get to fill it with worship and that I really believe that then seeps into the fabric of the building and affects the atmosphere. It affects the atmosphere of the children. So, um, yeah, let's fill, it with, let's fill it with worship so we can change the atmosphere. Never fails, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up,
yours never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me.
my mind to Calvary where Jesus fled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on curse
Lord, thank you so much for your presence. That you fill this place and you inhabit the praises of your people. And as you do, just extraordinary things can happen. And Lord, we are expectant this morning that your amazing grace will pour out on each and every one of us. Thank you that you're here, and we ask for an increase. Amen. Please sit down. Okay, we have been doing a series on home. Wonderful. Thanks, Josh. Uh, it's our word for the year. Um, God is allowing us to explore this word and what it means. So we talked to Dave last week, interviewed Dave talked about worship and the first week Laura spoke to us a little bit about uh, what she felt the word meant to us in January. Uh, today we've got about kids finding a home I believe and I'm going to hand over to Laura. Kids and youth, yes sorry, yes. Um, I'm going to hand over to Laura and Jenny and Susie Sue. Come out and join me ladies. Okay, so sorry, that's really loud. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, last week I asked uh, Dave a few questions about worship and what we think worship is and what the vision for worship is. And similar questions this morning to um, Jenny, who, along with Susan McClintock, oversees the kids' ministry, but we're going to explain gathered and scattered she's going to start with that so everyone knows what on earth we're talking about and then sue who how long have you been doing youth for in the vineyard since 19, 1998 i think 19 <laughs> yeah yeah and the, the remarkable thing is, at the end of DTI, which is the camping week, when we are on our knees, uh, absolutely, and if you've ever been to DTI, I know some of you in this room have done DTI, and you understand what, that, what the reality of that's actually like. Um, Sue is always like, same time next year then? I mean, I'm just like, unbelievable. Unbe so, yeah, absolutely. So, Jenny, um, kids' ministry, uh, we have two leaders gathered, a gathered pastor and a scattered pastor. What, what am I talking about? Well, that's, uh, yeah. So basically there's um, Susie and myself. Um, Susie is the gathered pastor. So she oversees Sunday mornings. Um, she sends out all the stuff that all the leaders do on a Sunday and does all that bit. And then I'm um, the other person. Um, I do the scattered stuff, um, so things like Lego Club, and then from there I then help out with events like we did the Chris Dingle service um, and anything else. So I kind of 
I dip my toe into a little bit of Sunday morning if it's like an event, um, but I'm mainly sort of scattered, so doing Lego Club and then anything else that my brain might come up with. <laughs> Fab. So that's that's why we have two people overseeing the kids' ministry. So one is like, so Susie kind of sets the program, sets the curriculum. She's the person that you speak to if the felt pens aren't working anymore. It's things like that. Um, and Jenny is like, out there she's also the person that does lots of the posting on social media like this is happening this is happening this is happening um so if you want anything on social media not just kids but beyond she's also the woman to talk to she's gonna hate me for saying that but um uh yeah so she is scattered she's basically scattering the seeds getting the word out there of this is what we do come and join in so um, like we've said the other week, uh, we want people to make this their home, but we have to invite people to our house. So that's partly what she's doing. So um, question to both of you. So currently, what does that practically mean? What does, so what does kids ministry look like at the moment in church? What is youth ministry at the moment in church? I mean, Sue, if yours, <laughs> yours is going to be quite a varied answer. So, so we'll start with you, Sue. Uh, okay, well, in very practical terms, youth ministry on a Sunday morning means that uh, uh, the youth have their own room and we go upstairs and um, if I've been good and prepped the lesson, we do the lesson. If I haven't been good and prepped the lesson, we play games, uh, which I uh, uh, have fully convinced myself is great anyway because that's fellowship and that's what we're all about. Um, so, um, so we have that and that's Sunday morning. And then we also have our Friday night sessions. Um, and again, um, that's a very much a friendship and fellowship type thing, being there for each other. Um, and um, um, I, I take kind of alternate Fridays, very roughly speaking, um, and they come over to mine. And um, we do all sorts, really, just based on kind of the numbers of who we've got again. It might be anything from watching a film to uh, we did a murder mystery the other week. That was really good for a little hectic and chaotic uh, pizza making, um, just whatever. The youth can lead that a bit as well if there's something that they particularly want to do. Uh, and it's just really nice to build those friendships. So that's what we do. Yeah, the murder mystery, can I just say, this was based in a imaginary bakery this all happened in sue's kitchen um and there was like mad chefs running the show um and they were actually actually baking in sue's kitchen but they had fairy cake fairy cake cases on a baking tray that they then added the mixture in with a ladle imagine how that went <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, when it came out of the oven it was a tray bake and it was hunt the paper that had just been submerged it it was brilliant they ate it they decorated alleged fairy cakes so um i just threw a bit of a curveball in there because it was a murder mystery i was like oh maybe it's been poisoned and then some of them slightly nervous ones were a bit like <laughs> they didn't want to eat it but anyway anyway it was all good uh jenny what practically what does that look like on a sunday uh, so on and, a beyond. and beyond. Uh, <laughs> uh, so on a Sunday, there is Planet Kids. Uh, there is asteroids and there is rockets at the moment. Um, because of numbers and age range and everything, they're all in together at the moment. And what happens is they stay in for a couple of songs and then you all of a sudden see a mass exodus. They aren't just running away. They are actually being taken by leaders um, upstairs. And we now have got some worship that can go on. We've sorted out the screen so they can do a couple of songs like Great Big God. Um, and then there's some Bible teaching, usually some glitter, some eating. Um, and then they might come back downstairs and just run around like loons. Um, so there's general just sort of chilling out listening and learning about Jesus um, on a Sunday. Um, and then in the week, fortnightly, we have Lego Club. So that is for everyone and anyone, um, specifically for sort of primary age. Um, and when I spoke to my kids about it, I was like, I said to them, 
um, what do you like about Lego Club? And they like the fact that they can see their friends not only on a Sunday morning, but on a Monday evening as well. So that was really nice to hear and really important that they get to have that community and that friendship build too. So, so staying with you, Jenny, uh, kids ministry gathered and scattered. Why is it important? Why, why, why shouldn't we just pour our energy into the grown-ups? Why is it important? Um, I was thinking about this and I was like, oh, that's, that's a very good question. <laughs> uh, um, and I think I thought, I took it back to sort of myself a little bit because I grew up in church. So therefore, from my point of view, and I know not everyone's the same, but because I had that foundation, because it was normal, so to speak, that I went every Sunday, that I spoke to other children, that we talked about Jesus, that we listened to songs. It just became part of who I am. And I think that's what's important with the kids ministry now. And it's not saying, you know, people can come to faith later on, but if you've got kids and you bring them to church, it's a time for them to meet with Jesus and know that he is not just some old man in a book that was like 2000 years ago that he's real today and that they can build a friendship up with him and with other people and I know that sometimes that especially when they're out in the world they can feel a little bit different and I don't think they can always put their finger on why they feel a little bit different but when they come here on a Sunday morning they feel like who they are and they feel at home. Fab. Um, as a teacher uh, there are enormous pressures on teenagers, social media, friendship groups, how they look, how they don't look, what they wear. Da, 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 da. So, why is it important? Um, well, when you said, when did I start? And I had to do a little bit of mental maths and said 1998. That was sort of within the vineyard. But actually, if we go back to 1984, and I'm just so probably some of you weren't alive in 1984, but there we are. But when we go back to 1984, and I was in the Girl Guides, and I wanted to get my childcare badge, I trotted along to a Church of England church um, to volunteer to do some of their Sunday school classes. And that's how it actually started. So it actually goes back to 1984. Because when I went um, and just volunteered to like start looking after the kids there were a group of adults there who were welcoming and proactive and inviting and said you don't need to just do this come and do this come and try this come and come there's a youth group there's a blah 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 and 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 really that is where that journey started and I'm still here now, you know, because it was those people who were then, it wasn't just then the Sunday morning in with the little kids. They were like, but also they opened up their homes. So, you know, we, we, we went around and we chatted and we talked things through as teenagers. And there was a bit of ping pong and there was a few weekends away and all of that stuff. But, but really the most important bit was actually grown-ups there for me interested in me wanting to talk about current things that were on my mind and the mind of other sort of young people like me and you know and and just giving up their time and 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 that sort of relating to us in an equals type way which is really impactful when you're kind of a teenager and you're bridging that world between like, you don't feel quite like a kid anymore, but like you're not quite peers with your mum and dad. So where, where do you take that stuff? And that was somewhere that that's was somewhere all those conversations had. So really, yeah, it goes right back till that time. Um, and I think that's why it's important. And that's kind of, I have that in my mind when I think about what it is that I want to offer. So for both of you, um, paint us a picture. Um, where, what's the dream? What's the vision? So are we going to just trot along? What, if you could do, you know, if you were God, 
<laughs> what would you do? If you could go to God and God, say, God would say, whatever you want, whatever you want, what do you want? What's the vision for the kids? What's the vision for the youth? Jenny, no oh. pressure. <laughs> um, oh, the vision. So I think to start with is that they come and they, they get to know each other. Uh, they get to know Jesus um, and they get to know that church is, isn't just sit down, it's not boring. Um, and then from there, I think it's getting them to, to really explore their relationship with Jesus and that friendship, um, learn a bit more about the Bible. I know growing up that because we did little Bible stories like Daniel in the lion's den, Noah's Ark, they stick. And it's later on that you explore that in a different way. But because you've got the foundational knowledge to start with, that really helps later. So it's really just trying to get them to, to look and realize that, oh, it's, it is interesting. It is fun. It's, it's exciting as well. Um, and then from there, it's like with Lego Club, we've started that. Um, and I've often, I've thought about it and it's come up a few times and I thought, oh, it's Lego club. Anyone can do Lego club, you know, just stick some Lego out and that's it. There you go. And I thought, oh, how, how can we make this more holy? Um, and then it kind of hit me that because you're doing it, because you're in the community, you don't have to do a whole load of, oh, come to church on Sunday. It's great if you do. Um, but, you know, oh, have you heard about Jesus? Because that freaks me out when I, I can't go up to someone and go, have you heard about Jesus? I just think, oh, no, that's not me. And I think it's just building that community. And from there, it's then building relationships and then setting up other groups. So setting up parent groups so they can go and chill out. For me, kids ministry is about the kids, but it's also about the parents as well. You know, but at the moment, there's parents in here, you can listen. Because you are, haven't got, mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy, going on. And thank God for the kids uh, team that go up and take them. Um, but yeah, really it's having that central group so the kids know that they can learn, can understand, and just build that relationship with Jesus. And then as time goes on, that they can invite friends to things like Lego Club. And they can start to share that, oh yeah, I go to church on Sunday as well and we do kind of similar stuff. Do you want to come and hang out? And then for parents to then talk and chat and let groups from like Lego Club start and parenting groups start and we can talk and then we can start to talk about our faith a bit more because it's once you start community and start people realizing that you're not weird, then that's when it all starts to flow. So I said, I said about the 1980s, I don't, I, I don't think that those people who necessarily, all, all of those people who knew me in the 1980s are, know that they count as part of where I am now. Um, and I don't know for which ones, but if, you know, for, for all of them, for any of them, that I'll be part of in the, 2040s, 50s kind of thing like that. I don't know. I don't know. So um, I had a um, I had a, a, a very specific prayer. I'd been to a uh, talk um, at South End Vineyard, uh, which I don't hugely remember all about, but it was a, it was it was to do with like asking God for gifts, um, you know, specific gifts, naming the, what you wanted and this was around the time that um, uh, some of you might remember these names, Frank and Angie Simpson, who were in South and Vineyard and they emigrated over to New Zealand and they were going. And this particular time, my I, I prayed perhaps with a fervor that like is is was is a bit more than my usual. It was okay. They were so hospitable. And I want then that then I want the gift that they had. I want the, the gift of being hospitable, hospitability, whatever that is. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That, that's what I, yeah, hospitableness. That, that's, and and, I, and I, I remember absolutely sort of praying that 
um, and saying, I, I, this is it. I, this is what I really, really want. I want this to be my gifting. Um, and then after that, obviously opportunities opened up for me to open up my house and do things, home groups and have youth coming in and doing stuff there. So I don't know, you asked about what the vision was. I, I, I know, I know what I, my little bit of it is now, but I don't really know where that goes and where that leads. I just know what I need to be doing in my little bit of that whole picture now. So, yeah. I've asked these guys if they have any um, stories that they have uh, seen, experienced, witnessed, been part of uh, whilst doing kids' work, whilst doing youth work. Um, certainly Sue and I, when we've been to DTI, uh, which is, so that stands for Dreaming the Impossible, for those that don't know, and there's about 3,000 teenagers that gather for five days in a field, um, and they're very intentional about talking about God, and m on more than one occasion during the week, they will say to the teenagers that if you if this has resonated with you and you want to find out who this Jesus is and if this is real, then come to the front. And, you know, they're teenagers, hugely self-conscious teenagers. And the people on the stage, who I think at that moment are enormously brave, and they're like, we're just going to wait because we believe that God is going to speak to some people and then it's just, just going to wait. And then you get, like, one brave little soul stand up and make their way to the front but the thing that absolutely does me in every single year and it happens every single year is the second that happens the 3,000 teenagers are erupting cheering whooping stamping their feet like the angels in heaven and then what happens is there's then not just one not just two but 20, 30, 40, 50. So I think last year it was hundreds, hundreds, hundreds gave their life to Jesus or people who, or teenagers who had completely walked away from God but recommitted. And every year, without fail, Sue and I are on the carpet. <laughs> you know, because it's worth it. And in that exhaustion, and you're thinking, all I can smell is sweaty B.O. teenagers. But in that moment, it's absolutely worth it. So I would do that until I die for that response. Um, so this is this is a this isn't one of the youth stories. This is my story, I guess, um, because um, I'd been running with a group of youth for a while from like the 13s up to kind of the 18s and aging out. Um, uh, people like Matthew, Matthew Maynard, of course, <laughs> like uh, like the, the Hughes boys. And then um, uh, uh, obviously my Clara, my eldest, she's 20 now and Peter, he's 18 and all that. So there'd been sort of a rush and then when we did doing DTI, Bart's oldest girls as well. So because um, that, that lot and I'd sort of grown with them towards aging out. And I was at DTI and it was, you know, it, a few nights of camping in the cold can make you feel a bit creaky and old. And I was thinking like, as this lot age out, including my own eldest, am I done? Do, is there, do we need a new, young, up and coming, bouncy, revitalizing, <laughs> joiner in a, you know, youth leader? Is someone going to come up in the ranks going to do all that? And, you know, is it, is, is that, is it my time? Because I bonded with that group so much, you know, I, I, I loved them, I loved them, I loved them. But they weren't going to be doing that forever. They were off to unis and life and all of this. And uh, I stood there, and I don't. She's not. I, she doesn't know I'm going to say this story. This is about Millie, right? Because she was still little. Millie was little. There was a gap, right? There's a sort of gap, and then the next lot, the young ones. Um, but 
Laura and Dave would typically come up kind of at the end to help all the step down and get us home and everything. So Millie would come and be part of that sort of final service at DTI and everything. Um, or or Soul Survivor, I forget which one it was. But I'm standing there and I was sort of in that prayerful place. Like, is this is this my end of the line? Is it is this is this my end of the line? Or is this am I still going? And uh, uh, I did that thing where I was like, I need a sign, Lord. I need a sign. Um, is this the end of the line or am I still going? And out of nowhere, she wove, apropos of absolutely nothing, Millie kind of wove her way through the crowd, said nothing, just came up to me and wrapped her arms around me in this enormous hug as we stood there. And I'm not sure, I, you know, I, 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 I did know Millie and we liked each other. You know, I liked Millie, but we hadn't, like we weren't intimate like that <laughs> you know like we did she just came out of nowhere and just squeezed me and embraced me and i was like i'm carrying on that's <laughs> that's it that's it that's the, that's next generation that is next. and that has been like because you've got like like alongside millie you've got the mcclintock girls now you've got the tiana sam and esther all of that next Jen, they're also in a block. And then, you know, I'll probably feel the same when I come to the end there. Is like, is that now the, is that that block? But, you know, it's already, you know, we've now we've got Tim and Matty coming up and blah, blah, blah. So they're the next next, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, it was just very, very clear. And that was, again, it wasn't one of those, it's either DTI or Soul Survivor, but it was a real kind of, okay, keep on keeping on. That's from the Lord. <laughs> um yeah i was trying to think about stories because kids are a bit funny <laughs> um it's not because obviously we don't have like dti there isn't that like full-on wow they're going for god and everything and i'm not gonna lie kids doing kids is hard work um whether you're a parent whether you're not a parent they they're an absolute joy and they come up with such interesting ideas and questions but my word <laughs> they are hard work and i think some of the stories that i think for me is just building relationship with them and when they come in on a sunday and you know you say hello to them they're like oh oh Oh, an adult spoken to me. I'm a, I'm a real person. And just seeing that connection. And it's, and some of the, some of the questions that I get asked, it's like, obviously I provide most of the kids in the kids' list. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, my goodness, it's some of the way their brain works. And you think, that's because we do kids ministry, because we talk about Jesus on a Sunday, they then come home and they just open up and you're like, uh, you know, why did God make this? Why did Jesus do that? Well, if Jesus rose again, where is he now? And you're just like, sorry, what? <laughs> this is usually at eight o'clock at night. And I just think, wow, you know, that is all going in and then all coming out again. And those questions, adults ask and it really gets me thinking and the fact that their brains are working like that now what kind of questions and what kind of answers are they going to have later on and be able to witness and share their faith so i think i think that's that's the stories when you look at children when you look at some of the things they come out with or you know just walking on they go oh look god made that flower that's the stories and that's what hits me yeah we Sue talked about people kind of coming through the ranks. There are uh, children that I remember being in <laughs> nappies and have gone all the way through and have now gone off and have gone to university. So Dave and Ali sitting in the front row, their daughter's gone off to university and is now involved in a church at her university and is now just about to start leading worship at that university. So, you know, how amazing is that? That it just, we're, we've talked at the beginning, right, about scattering seeds. So, and it's not just the strangers on the street. Yes, we love the people out there, but we've got a whole harvest field um, right here. 
And one, so Susan McClintock, who she can't be here this morning because um, it's her dad's birthday. Um, but she said, please, please also just remind people that the, the kids and the youth are not the church of tomorrow. They are really relevant right now that they are so integral, that they are so key and that they make it happen as much as um, the slightly more mature people in the congregation. So, and, and that's, that's what building home is, that's what family is. It's, you know, it's, rec it's every age. So from, a, we've got tiny, tiny dots that come here. We've got people who are in their 80s and everyone in between, and everyone is as important and as relevant as everybody else. So, ladies, thank you so much. Thank you for what you do as well. Amazing, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the, the youth team, the kids team. What you do week in, week out with no fuss is extraordinary. It is extraordinary and does not go unnoticed. Um, we want to pray. Dave, come on. John, we're going to finish by praying. We won't, we're going to finish quite quickly. Yeah? Yeah? Dave, come up. I just wanted to share a super quick story. Um, Anna spoke to me this week because um, she's had shin splints from dancing and um, she'd asked me to pray. So I prayed and she said they felt much better. Um, and in her year group meeting, a lot of the girls have got shin splints and they were saying, um, what can we do? And Anna said, mine are much better. And they said, how? And she said, ibuprofen. And then they looked at her and she said, and um, prayer. And one of the girls came up to her afterwards because none of them are Christians and said, can you pray for my shin splints? Because I'm not a Christian, so it won't work if I do it, but I'd like you to pray for me. <laughs> That's what it's all about. There you go. It's cool. It's cool. Amazing. Amazing. So uh, why don't you stand? If you're able to, why don't you stand? We're just going to finish by um, praying for some people. Jenny, could you just let Ros know that we're pretty much done and so she can release the children <laughs> Dave do you want to start by praying yeah come Holy Spirit if you're involved in kids ministry in any way just hold your hands out before the Lord if you've ever Done a session with the kids or youth. <clears throat> Lord, as Jenny said, it's you know it can be hard at times between kids and youth, and we know we need to receive from you, Lord. So we're going we're going to do that now. We receive from you whether we are actively involved in kids' work, youth ministry, or whether we are uh, a church member. Loving it and supporting it and praying for it, Lord. We ask you to come, Holy Spirit. Give us your heart for children. Give us your heart for youth. If you see people with their hands held out, just, just put your hand on their shoulder and just bless what God's doing. These guys just give week in, week out. Give up their time. A couple of ladies right at the back need laying hands on. Yeah, and Sue and Colin. Bless the Lord. Bart, you do youth stuff. If you're thinking, well, I don't really get involved with kids, uh, this is the church and it takes a church, it takes a village to bring up a child. Uh, and we have that holistic view here that everybody gets to be involved in that. Kids watch kids see they see what we do they we model life to them they're going to be as tall as and ugly as us one day <laughs> and uh, they see what we do if anyone's Available to pray for Bart, just uh, lay your hands on him, that would be good.
Well, well, no, I know that you've done loads of youth work and you work with children as well. So if you're up for some prayer. Sue, Sue's can pray for you. That's quite safe. <laughs> Uh, Lucy, I just feel like God is saying you have no idea the influence you have on kids. You just you just haven't seen how much He loves what you do with children, uh, and your your motherliness, your the way that you that you model the Christian life, the way that you hold yourself together, the way that you talk to kids, and though what you you you're like a um, you're like a, a dog with a bone. You just you you don't give up with kids kids that you tutor you like you you always find a way to connect with them god loves that he loves the way that you just won't give up on children uh vix i feel like god is saying there's a lot more to your involvement with kids uh i know you've had a, a rocky road the last few years with uh, looking after kids and how, how difficult and how challenging that can be and God said, you're just learning. You're just learning why I want you to go with this because you're doing great. Mm. It's amazing what you've provided for people and the input he's now. And he bring, he's bringing children before you that he wants you to influence. Mm. Yeah, I, th I think this is for a couple of people. Um, I think, Suze, I think this is for you. Emily, I think this is for you. That... Um, You've historically worked or you work with, you know, your job is closely linked to children, but it's, it's more than a job, it's a calling. That There's a calling on you. And I don't know how that's going to look, and I know for both of you it's going to be very different. Um, and it might not be a direct, you know, I'm not saying you're going to, like I know that you do stuff in classrooms and you work with parents and blah, 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 blah all of that. But there's a calling there is a calling on you. There's a calling on your life. So as you know that there's a calling on you, you absolutely know it. And however hard you run, there's a calling on you. There is a call and you can't run away from it. You can't run away from it. And you can, like the Holy Spirit is on you, is on you. Emily, there is a calling on you. You are, at, I feel like you're at the start of an amazing journey. There is such a call on you. And, and at the moment, you don't even know what that really means or how that looks, but there is just really wonderful things to come. Really wonderful things to come. And Jodie, there's a call on you. There is such a call on you. And get ready. I feel like the Lord says to you, get ready. You need to get ready. And like on a really brilliant roller coaster, you're at the bit where they've just put the harness over you and like, okay, ready? It's just about to go, it's just about to go. It's like that. I feel excited that God is on the move. He is, he is busy, he's not done with us. We said that a couple of weeks ago, he's not done. God's on the move. Um, there are a few people in here this morning and you have really, I don't know if it's because it's like the cold, but you have struggled with your health over the last, particularly the last kind of week, 10 days, we want to pray for you. So if that's you and you've struggled with your health and you know that you're not in tip top form, then we want to pray for you. So if that's you, come forward and we will lay hands on you because we want to pray for healing. So some of you are going to need to move your legs. So one, two, three, go if you want healing. Come forward now and we'll pray for you.